Hello and welcome. In today's recipe, I'm gonna be showing you the best way to make your red pork tamales. In our bowl, I have one and a half pounds of pork. I'm using pork butt today, but if you pick any of the pieces that have fat, those are the best ones to use uh, for tamales. Even if you have pork with bone in it, oh, even better. It just adds an extra flavor. So just go ahead and add all those pieces into your Instant Pot. Add your salt, and if you like uh, bouillon, go ahead and use your bouillon of choice for this part. Two bay leaves. Add two and a half cups of water. Seal the deal. And we're gonna pressure cook for 35 minutes. Next, you wanna place your corn husk into some really hot boiling water. You wanna make sure that your leaves are completely covered, and if for some reason your water gets cold, just add a little bit more hot water. We wanna keep these soaked for 45 minutes to an hour, so that when we get to using them, they're completely soft and pliable. To your pot of hot water, you wanna add your chiles, make sure that you remove the stems and the seeds. Onion and your garlic. Continue to boil until your chiles are nice and soft and that's usually gonna take you about eight to 10 minutes. And we're gonna use this cup of broth to blend our chiles. And we need to take our pork out so that way we can shred it before we add it to our chili sauce. And you guys already know how to do that. I'm gonna do it with two forks. And just start shredding. If you have pieces of fat that are not something your family would like to eat, just go ahead and place it to the side. Because a lot of the kids are gonna complain, there's too much fat. I never complained, I like the fat on my tortilla, a little bit of salt and lemon, we're good to go. If your fat is cooked properly, you wouldn't be complaining. But, yep. I don't know, my older son does complain. <laughs> and I cook it properly. <laughs> My oldest used to complain all the time, not anymore. Add your pork broth or water, one tablespoon of chicken bouillon, and you guys always ask me why do I use uh, chicken for everything? Because it balances the flavors of the other proteins. Now all the ingredients that we boiled with our chiles are gonna go straight into our blender, our onion and our garlic. And now we're gonna blend until smooth. And boom, done. If you don't have a high powered blender, you're gonna have to strain this chile. And you wanna save half a cup of our blended chile and this is gonna be to season our masa. Place your burner on a medium heat and add your chili sauce. For the extra chili that we have in our blender, I'm gonna add half a cup of our pork broth and I'm just gonna shake it up so that we can keep as much of the chili sauce as we can. Next, you wanna add your shredded pork. Go ahead and combine all your ingredients. Make sure that your pork is nestled comfortably in this sauce. And we're gonna to continue to cook on a low heat for another six to eight minutes. We just want our flavor profiles to combine and blend well together before we fill our tamales. If you notice that your pork is getting a little bit dry, you can go ahead and add a little bit more of our pork broth in here, and that'll, that'll just give it the moisture that you need. You should be perfectly fine to do that, or a little bit of water. But if you're using water, um, it's not seasoned, so it might change the flavor profile just a little bit. After about six to eight minutes, you're gonna notice that the color of your sauce has changed. Our ingredients are well combined, and this is a perfect time for you to taste uh, the salt in your dish. If you need to add a little bit more salt, go ahead and start by maybe one fourth at a time, boil for another two minutes, and then just leave it. Don't continuously add salt because you're gonna ruin your dish just slightly, but this is pretty right on. The first step to making masa is whipping the lard, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna use our whisk attachment. We're gonna start at a low speed and then pick it up to an eight for about two to three minutes. We want our lard to be nice and whipped and I'll show you the consistency we're looking for in just a moment. And after three minutes, we have amazingly whipped lard. You see how shiny that is? and it's really soft, look. You guys can see that. 
When you see it shiny, soft, and smooth, like you were able to spread it over bread, then it's ready. Switch your attachment to your paddle and add your masa. I'm gonna start slow and then I'm gonna pick up the speed to about an eight and I'm gonna mix for a good three minutes. Next, you wanna add your chicken bouillon to your masa. You can add salt or whatever kind of bouillon you like. I'm using the natural uh, nor chicken bouillon today. And you wanna add your sauce. I'm gonna add about one fourth of a cup at a time. And you wanna check the texture of your masa once you blend it. Sometimes, depending on the brand of masa that you're using, you might need a little bit more or a little bit less. I'm gonna to continue to mix for another four minutes. Gonna start low and then pick up the speed. Halfway through the process, make sure to go in your bowl and scrape all around to make sure that we blend everything properly. Especially right there at the bottom. You can probably see some fresh, uncolored masa. Just right there. Oh, I see that, mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna continue for another two minutes. And boom, done, amigos. We are ready to start spreading. You wanna make sure to spread your masa on the part that's smooth on your corn husk. The other side is rough. Well, not too rough because we soak them, but, but it has ripples. Right? It has ripples. So you want to spread the masa on the softer side. Take your corn husk, and if it has a lot of water, just get a little kitchen cloth and make sure it's not too, too wet. You have to determine the size of your tamal that you want to make. Uh, for me, this is really big. So I'm just going to slice a little bit of the leaf. Make sure that I can handle it in my hand, just like this. And if I can do that, that means that I can handle this size of a tamal. Now all the gentlemen with those big hands, you guys need to be helping for this part. Men are intimidated to make tamales, but they have the strength. They don't, they shouldn't be they intimidated. They shouldn't be making tamales, okay? <laughs> Let us do the easier parts of this. <laughs> a little bit before the halfway mark, I'm gonna place our masa, and I have about three tablespoons here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spread it a little bit this way. I'm gonna do a dance and spread it this way. See that? And you can spread it the whole way with your spoon like I've shown you in many other videos, but today we're gonna do something a little bit different. I've used a tamal spreader, I've used a spoon, and today I'm gonna show you how to do this with a little scraper. You're gonna take your scraper and you're gonna come about this one at an angle. And you're just gonna swipe down. You don't want that masa to be super thick or else it's not gonna cook properly, but we want it thick enough. I know some of you are gonna say, why are you using this method? I know that some of you are intimidated to make tamales precisely because of this part. You don't know how much to add, when is it too much, where did we need it to add more? And this, I feel, helps you achieve all of that. Helps you spread it to where perhaps you need to just a little drop more and smooth it out. Do you see that? I do. And those of you that know me know this is not my favorite part. <laughs> It's my favorite part. <laughs> I didn't want to do this part, but it's easy for me to do. It's just not something that I enjoy in the kitchen, I'll be honest. But Cloud does. You do. <laughs> so anything that you have left over, you can just come back, scrape it, and place it right here. Boom, almost done. Let's fill our tamal. <laughs> and you have to spread it to where it becomes part of the husk. That's right, and that's for that even cooking too, right? Yes, you're gonna get even cooking this way, and you don't wanna end up with the extra bumps that don't cook fully, okay? So let's go ahead and start filling our tamales. Get so excited about this part. So cup your little hand so that that way when the filling comes through, it doesn't drip everywhere. Take about two tablespoons, two and a half tablespoons of your pork with the sauce. And I know you're gonna think like, that's not enough. Yes, when these cook, it's enough, I promise you. I'm gonna add a potato because these are classic for us. This is what our family likes. Don't feel obligated to add any of this to your tamales. If you just like them with plain pork, leave them that way. But for us, we like them with some olives. And sometimes I use the pitted ones, and sometimes I use the ones that have the little stuff inside. And not to worry, 
you just have to warn your family which ones you used. They're ready for the surprise in the tamal. And you can add some raisins. When I was younger, I didn't like them in my tamales, and now I'm loving it. That's exactly what I want. Go ahead and cover all those ingredients nice and tight. Press back just like that. Flip it, don't reverse it. They're ready. While I'm placing our tamales in our basket, I'm gonna give you guys a little story. Growing up, we used to place our tamales in a pot and you used to put a plate in the middle. But after I had my older son, I couldn't do that because it was way too loud for him. Oh, because of the rattling? The rattling or certain sounds or even um, even our blender. So when you guys see me all cheery about the blender, it's, yeah, I'm being extra as usual, but I'm actually really excited that I get to use my blender at full speed. <laughs> And it's not like um, your baby was being, uh, what's the word? Like he was purposely saying, I don't like noises. It's a, it's a sensory yeah, it is. situation for him. And if you guys get to choose your hojas from, there's a brand, El Venado. Skip those guys. I wasn't too happy with them. Place your tingi inside your pressure cooker and add your water. And this pressure cooker, friends, is called the Instant Pot. A Duo Nova. It's 10 quarts. It's the latest and greatest model, 2020. As always, we'll link it in the description area. And bring your lovely basket of goodies and place it inside. Just adjust it a little. And I'm really liking this one because I don't have to do absolutely anything. But when I do release, I just get to press this button instead of the little latch here that's been giving me a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> it's that guy back there. It's that guy back there, the one we used for the puerco. Pressure cook, and we're gonna pressure cook for 38 minutes, okay? For those of you interested in an instant pot, I would say go with the 10 quart that has this button. It's gonna make you really, really happy. If for some reason you haven't allowed your tamales to rest for about 10 to 15 minutes just till they cool, um, you're not gonna allow them to form and have the ridges that we know for tamales. It'll be nice and mushy and soft, still good, but you won't get them to form that way. So let them rest. I'm gonna open it up a bit so you can see all the goodies are well cooked in here. Everything's juicy and we're ready for a taste. Say, ah. I was gonna do shark to you. Da -na. Da -na -na. Da -na -na. Mm, that's delightful. Mm. That's 10 plus. Quería que me dijeras que está perro. Está Yes. So good. Now it's your turn, honey. <laughs> your eye mm. came out. Mm. <laughs> This is so good. And you don't have to wait for the holidays. You can have tamales whenever you want. Now we have other videos showing you how to make tamales and there's a lot of wonderful tips in those, um, whether it's handmade or in a stand mixer, uh, but you don't want to miss out on those videos and the tips. And those curious of my mother, she's in that video too. Ooh, that's so good. Amigos, I do have a tip to share with you. If you're using a natural chicken bouillon, you might need to add a little bit extra, but if you're using, for example, the regular one that I absolutely love too, um, you'll need to use a little bit less. All the measurements and suggestions and tips will be in the description area, and I hope you guys like some quick and easy tamales for when you're craving them, that you don't have to be there for hours. You really don't. And like you just the same goals, and like the same goals, que se hagan los tamales. Que se hagan los tamales. Don't forget to tag us on Instagram, um, I have been a little bit busier, but I'd love to see when you guys do hashtag views on the road. I get to see all the wonderful things um, that you guys have created. So thank you. <laughs> but in all honesty, Claude, oh. this is how I... 
I'm gonna say to all of you, don't try and eat a dozen of these. Don't try and eat 20 in one day. Be moderate about it. Um, you can really hurt your stomach if you eat too many at a time because they're so good you don't want to stop. But I definitely suggest you take breaks throughout the day. That's usually what I do during the holidays. I'll eat three and then I'll wait and I'll walk around, do my things and then come back for some more tamales. But I did do a challenge where I had a lot. So that's why I'm letting you guys know to please be careful with the tamales. And I'm just going to eat it challenge style. Bye. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. And we want to thank each and every one of you that's been making our recipes. All the lovely comments that we've been receiving this past week. We're super excited to keep cooking with you guys. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios.